About the hydrodynamic forces, the drag force in creeping flow, of course, is not zero because the viscosity is dominant here. But we have a well-known law in this uh, case, which is called the Stokes law, which says that the drag force is, uh, the, uh, equals the product of a constant times uh, the product of three, uh, three parameters, velocity, uh, the velocity and the length scale of the problem. As you see, we don't have uh, the density among these, uh, these parameters because the inertia is zero in comparison to other forces in the heavier stress equation. This is called the Stokes law uh, for any arbitrary shape placed inside a creeping flow. The drag force exerted on that shape is, a pro is the product of a constant uh, and three other parameters. For different geometries, just this constant changes. But here we have uh, the Cotta's law for the lift. This time for the lift force, which again says that the lift force is the product of the density or circulation which is needed to produce, to generate the, the flow over that body and uh, the velocity of the incoming flow or the upstream velocity and the length scale of the problem. This is called the Cotta's condition or the Cotta's law for the lift force. The Stokes law is for the drag force. Again, you see uh, the viscosity disappears in this relation because the viscose forces are negligible. Uh, in creeping flow, we have a well-known paradox which is called the Stokes paradox, which says that the which says that obtaining a two-dimensional Stokes flow solution is impossible. You cannot find a two-dimensional solution which can satisfy the boundary condition of flow over uh, bluff bodies at the infinity. Uh, from a mathematical viewpoint, it says that uh, the uh, Stokes flow or the creeping flow over, uh, over for example, uh, a two-dimensional bluff body uh, contains a singularity of logarithmic type at infinity. But here in uh, potential flow, we have D'Alembert or D'Alembert's paradox, which is again very well known which says that the drag force exerted on an arbitrary object inside, uh, inside the potential flow is a zero. Um, this is again uh, a paradox because apparently it's not zero in the real application. Uh, another similarity between these two kinds of flows is the fact that both of them, the governing equation of both of them are linear. So can you, you can easily use the superposition to obtain analytical results for both of them. Here uh, in potential flow we have elementary solutions or the basic solutions which are thing or source, the doublet or the point vortex or the uniform flow. You can combine the solution of these elementary uh, flows to obtain uh, flows, uh, potential flow solutions for any arbitrary field. So, uh, some of important and well-known solutions of the potential flow are flow, potential flow over cylinder, over a sphere, over rotating cylinder, uh, or over ranking body, uh, or Kelvin's oval, and image method, panel method are very important in this kind of flow. Another case, uh, here the creeping flow is also linear. We have uh, an elementary solution of the Stokes, uh, Stokes equation, which is the Navier-Stokes equation without the inertia terms, uh, which is called the Stokes let And uh, we, the well-known solutions of the Stokes flow is, or the creeping flow, uh, are the sphere, Stokes flow over sphere, uh, or over droplets, over vertical or horizontal disk, a steroid needle and the different solutions of the low Reynolds flow uh, in internal flow applications, which is called the lubrication theory.